prominent Nigerians, including Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, Nigeria, Dilon Femi Otadola, governors, former Senate presidents, working in forging a common national consensus ahead of 2023. And ripples over the APC presidential ticket continues to rage as internal house trading continues across the country. Tonight, we dig deeper into some of the issues raised. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. It is now nine days since the National Assembly re-amended, passed, and sent back to the President the Electoral Act Amendment Bill for the President's assent. This comes after he has first rejected it by to Channels Television that he will sign the bill should the National Assembly fix all the gray areas he pointed out to them and so the nation now awaits the president's assent and hoping that the president will keep to his promise of signing the bill. And the House of Representatives Minority Leader, Honorable Undudi Elumelu, has asked his colleagues and members of the People's Democratic Party to take advantage of the crisis rocking the ruling of Progressive Congress APC to consolidate on the plans of the PDP to retake power in 2023 from the ruling party. He was speaking when the caucus of the House met the former Senate President Pius Ayim in Abuja. APC as a party is disjointed. And PDP has successfully shown that they can lead the way. Today, we have completed our convention. All the congresses were done without acrimony. But of course, you know that APC set out to elect 36 state chairmen plus FCT, and they have succeeded in electing 92. So I wonder how they are going to do their convention. So it now behoves on us to be more united and open our doors because the fallout of February 26 will form a new Nigeria where PDP will be leading the progressives to rescue Nigeria. The House of Reps Minority Leader, Honorable Undudi Elumelo, it's now time for us to serve you hot uh, political roundup stars. As Nigerians continue to contend with the effects of the unsafe petroleum products in circulation in parts of the country, the federal government says it has commenced an investigation to unravel the circumstances surrounding the development. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency yesterday confirmed that methanol quantity above Nigeria's specification was discovered in a supply chain but has since been isolated. It will be a major investigation uh, to unravel everything and then let's really get to the bottom of it before um, uh, we can come back and tell you what is going to happen to the culprits. I feel like returning to the National Assembly. Former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ayim Payos Ayim, has met the People's Democratic Party's caucus in the National Assembly to solicit their support for his bid to contest the 2023 presidential poll on the platform of the opposition party. Ayim, who met with the caucus in Abuja, said the meeting was to inform the lawmakers of his aspiration to be the PDP candidate in next year's presidential election. The former SGF noted that he recognizes that he needed to seek the support of the National Assembly members, which is his primary constituency, of his ambition, as he cannot embark on a journey without their support. 
the thing that has not happened in our party. The last may not have been heard of reactions trailing the governorship primaries of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State. Senator Biodung Olujimi of the PDP says a third force option cannot be ruled out if her political group reaches an agreement as she alleges that the gender card is being played against her in a PDP where winner takes all. At the APC end, Senator Payami Bamadele insists the party must adopt a new arrangement to produce a generally acceptable candidate or get ready for legal action. This is a business we came into voluntarily. And when you are in it, people are supposed to build consensus, not to talk down on others. What we are calling for now is that the leadership of the party <coughs> will do the right thing. The governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, says he will not tolerate any form of infighting within the PDP in Edo State. He warns that any disgruntled person should rather leave than try to be a clog in the wheel of progress of the party. Mr. Obaseki sounded this warning as he inducted the latest members of his cabinet at the Festival Hall of the State Government House in Benin City, the Edo State capital. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's quickly uh, get some of this information out for you before we get into the meat of our uh, conversation tonight. Let's tell you that the back and forth or the conversation around justice delivery in Nigeria. Now we've gotten the response from the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, who uh, on this program a few days ago spoke about the pace of work in the judiciary in relation to high-profile cases when the Chief Justice of Nigeria's office responded to him yesterday. Now we are getting a response from the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami. His office in a statement today says that on the issue of justice dispensation is not blame the judiciary. The Attorney General says that he accords respect to the democratic provisions of the doctrine of separation of powers among the three independent and separate arms of government. He went further to say that it's maintained, uh, the federal government under the Buhari administration has maintained the sanctity of the provisions of section four, five, and six of the constitution and the responsibilities of the different arms of government. He said it was on that note that the federal government supported the review of section 121, subsection three of the constitution of the federal republic to accommodate the provisions of financial autonomy of the state legislature and judiciary, majorly saying, there's no blame on the judiciary. Well, there have been some series of meetings of some eminent Nigerians. The aim of their meeting is to unite the country as Nigeria faces a very critical moment of power transition and a major election year. A group of 100 political and business leaders which came under the edges of the 2022 committee says they have no business supporting any aspirant to succeed President Muhammad Buhari in 2023, but rather interested in ensuring that quality leaders emerge at all levels in the next general elections. They met with President Buhari at a presidential villa a few days ago. And over the weekend, they held another meeting. This time, it was, uh, we gathered that the, the likes of Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, Nigeria, Bilonia, Femi Otadola, several governors, sitting and former governors and former Senate president and also sitting federal lawmakers were in attendance at that meeting over the weekend. And their plan, according to them, is to forge a consensus for a national rebirth. Tonight, I have one of the co-conveners of the 2022 committee, Mr. Kashim Imam, a two-time PDP governorship candidate in Borno State. He was a third Republic Borno State chairman of the Socio Democratic Party, SDP. He was appointed the presidential liaison to the Senate at the start of President Olusegun Obasanjo's uh, administration. He is a farmer, a banker, a politician, the president of the King's College Old Boys Association, and the chairman of Tet Fund, chairman of the Force Guarantee Pensions. Mr. Kashim Shatima, uh, Kashim Imam joins us right here in our Abuja Sido. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Good evening, viewers. What gave birth to the 2022 committee? 
very genuine concerns about the situation in the country, whether um, it's the economy, which is very critical, by the way, um, insecurity, um, the um, political transition. Um, I'm sure you would agree with, with me that all is not well with our country. Um, so majority of us, so uh, from across uh, the political divide, and also even those that are prominent, very prominent, we, from what the list you just read, we were able to bring under the same, in the same room, um, all the leading lights in this country, whether in the field of business, um, in the field of politics, and I made the point that um, amongst all the politicians who are able to attract um, um, politicians from across the divide. So our concern is our country. Um, Nigeria is literally practically on the brink, and we felt that something needed to be done and needed to be done urgently. If something is not done urgently, um, we run the, the risk of losing this country. Now, um, yes, we've been active. Yes, everybody has had the uh, committee, on uh, um, 2022 committee, uh, in the past three weeks or so. But we've been talking, we've been meeting um, across um, both political and non-political lines, um, across party lines for us and politicians for the past two years. Uh, it is that effort that um, culminated in the series of meetings that we've had in the, in the past three years. Okay, so in, in essence, if you look at it, there was some, well, unfounded now, because there are some, some deniers before 2015 election. There were talks that from the United States, there are some reports, uh, although, although now denied and un, but say he's unfounded, that Nigeria was going to break, that that election was going to be a make or mark for Nigeria. Does it look like the description that was made in 2015, and I'm making reference to what you said, that Nigeria is on the brink. If you can give us an idea of what exactly you're talking about. Now, I, I agree with you that there were genuine concerns prior to the elections in, in 2015. Um, there were also very um, serious, um, very um, genuine um, concerns that things were not right. But it just it tells you about the resilience of our country. Um, somehow, even when we are on the brink, even when things are terribly wrong, we have managed to patch up and to survive as a nation. I also be believe that even this time um, is, is, is precisely um, going to somehow we we'll get out of this mess. But it is not just enough to barely get out of the mess. We must find lasting solutions to our national problems. We must um, find, in particular, the economy um, across the country there's hunger. Um, and it is the economic situation, if you ask me, that is breeding the, 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 the problem of um, insecurity. As the adage goes, um, a hungry man is an angry man. Um, uh, I probably um, saw this very early in, in, um, in the day coming. And I was, I'd been expressing concerns for maybe approximately 30 years. As far back as 1990, I was chairman of the Social Democratic Party in Borno. Um, so we used to go on campaigns in the early 90s. Um, if we go drive into the local government headquarters, I will see young boys, literally in their thousands, they will be chasing the, the, uh, our convoy. And I will look at my wristwatch, 10 a.m., 11 a.m. I will say to myself that, look, we are going to pay a very great price for this. These kids ought to be in school. Is those small boys um, that were probably four, five, six years old then that have now grown to become Boko Haram, uh, bandits, uh, mm -hmm. you just name it. Uh, so, um, uh, and our situation actually keeps deteriorating. We keep moving from um, bad to, to, to worse. And right. I also want to say that... Okay. So, sorry, sorry, please land on that thought, because I'm I, going to ask you a very critical question now. I, I, go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, so uh, you are being on the board of companies. 
you sit down, you strategize. You look at the problems and try to find solutions to the problem. So let me ask you, what is the worst case scenario if we fail to get it right in 2023? Well, um, that is a difficult one. I'm not a seer, um, but um, uh, it's right to... Now, let's even look at it this way. Look at the situation in every sector. Our institutions across board all have literally, practically collapsed, whether it's the academia, um, it's for us and politicians, it is uh, the elites in business, uh, but critically, um, significantly, that even the judiciary, um, things are def definitely, certainly not right. So almost every institution that you look at, it's, it's decaying, um, it's literally um, collapsing. Um, take the Anambra elections as an example. Um, across party lines, both, in, both of the major, even if you include APGA, or, um, three, probably there are also one or two smaller um, parties that there were like 40, 50 aspirants. Each of those aspirants had a valid um, subsystem, court judgment in his pocket, delivered by different uh, judges. Um, in worst case scenario, so some were obtaining judgment from KB. The elections is in, in Anambra, some in Jigawa, like that. The our situation is that bad. Even you, uh, the media, you are not immune from it. Uh, long ago in the past, we had problems, small. Um, so you are driving on the road, and you come across the policeman, and he says, Oga, your boy is greeting you. Yes. But then it was not so bad. But today, as I said, nobody is immune from the madness. And um, nobody should hold either the president or um, one party responsible for the mess. The president has explained that in spite of his best intentions and his best efforts, he is constrained by the fact that this is a political regime. When first he became president, head of state, he came as a military head of state. He said that at that time he assumed everybody guilty until proven otherwise. Um, today, as civilian president, he has to assume everybody innocent until proven guilty. So um, the two dispensations were radically different. Um, uh, and all of us, I want to say this, with all sense of responsibility, every single one of us is guilty. Nobody can exonerate himself. So, but we felt that something ought to be done for us to fix the country, mm -hmm. for us to put things right, um, so that our businesses will work, um, the political climate will be better. All right. Yeah. Mr. Imam, I was asking, I asked that question because if anybody had a terminal disease, sometimes doctors will say, you have two years, you have three years, or you can live for as long as you want if you do this, if you do that. Sometimes it's good to know what the problems are and what is the need for you if you take it. So the question is, what is the 2022 committee offering Nigeria? Um, we met in Lagos on Sunday, as you rightly observed, and I'm confirming the fact that, yes, we met. Um, we had a plenary where these critical fundamental um, um, issues and areas were addressed. Um, we had um, participants who are not just in their um, 80s, but closer to uh, the age of 90. We also had um, the younger ones between the ages of 30, 40, so that nobody is left out. I wanted to hear all the different perspectives. After the plenary, we broke into committees, uh, one on the economy, the second one on security, the, the third one on political transition. And uh, so the whole of Saturday um, was uh, devoted to committee work. On Sunday, the different committees presented their reports to the wider house again. So we, 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 all hundred of us met to receive the report of the committees and also to ask very fundamental um, questions 
from from the chairman, uh, co uh, the co-chairman uh, uh, of, of of the various committees. Um, what uh, solutions are we providing? Uh, we met first under Chatham House rules. Um, we have very, I, I can make general comments like this, but we will not be presenting um, the report formally until we rec rec reconvene here in Abuja on Sunday. After that, we will put our findings and our resolutions um, across, before Nigerians. Okay, so initially, when we started this conversation, you told us about the danger in us not uh, heeding to the need of fixing Nigeria's problems before 2023 election. So I assume that your major objective is when there is going to be a new leadership, there's supposed to be an influence on that new leadership to do the right thing. So legally speaking, all of these recommendations, how do you hope to make it uh, effective or to make it happen, to make it um, uh, justiciable or to make it um, effective for the use of the nation? No. Because you are not set up by anybody, any legal body in the land. We actually, that is the reason um, and the justification for the fact that we made across party lines. It's also the main reason that we did not restrict it to politicians. We said to ourselves that especially the politicians amongst us, that we are all Nigerians. Um, everybody is feeling the pinch. So it was necessary for us to also to involve um, critical players um, in the economic um, sphere, in, part in particular uh, from the private sector. Um, how do we get everybody um, to implement our findings? Again, very simple. We are trying to draw templates as to what must be done. And in drawing these templates, we felt that um, both parties should be involved. We believe that regardless of who, let me now talk, talk about the presidency, which is the most critical one, most uh, important one. Whoever emerges from whichever party, since critical elements from the two parties participated, in uh, our meetings, in the retreat, in, in, in profiling solutions. Um, we hope that uh, whoever it is that emerges will abide by these um, templates that is carefully put together. Um, now, aside from this, we are also concerned about the quality of leadership. Um, so, and the leadership, this leadership is not restricted only to who becomes president. The Senate is a very important institution. The House of Rep Representatives is also a very important institution. Um, the judiciary, we rec recognize, is, is also another um, equally uh, important institution. The predominance of those in the critical sectors of the economy um, um, at the retreat um, also shows that um, uh, they are not left out. But what is most important is the interest that this has generated across this country. Mm -hmm. What is also equally important is that somebody like Aliko Dangote, Abdul Samadhi Sayakarabio, Jumovia, Antonio Lumielu, um, Hubbard uh, Wigwe, um, Atedo Peter Said, Udo Doma, Foladiola, Femi Otedola, I can go on and on and on that men of the, the, the uh, um, uh, um, um, caliber will leave everything that they are doing, everything, and lock themselves up in a hotel for three days is in itself encouraging. Encouraging, it, it sounds, and, no, yeah. no, encouraging um, see, once upon a time, men of this caliber probably will not even bother themselves. So that, that is this genuine interest um, shows that well, there's concern, there's the interest, um, there's the determination that this time we must do things differently. You know, the reason why I'm asking this, we are all students of history. We learn every day from what has happened in the past. It's so encouraging when you hear these stories about how Nigerians, loyal Nigerians come together 
to want to forge, uh, like you said, consensus for national rebirth. Even that title alone gives some kind of courage and some kind of hope for Nigeria within the next, I mean, for the next coming years. But the question is, the Steve Oransai report, anybody that had gone through that document, we know it's a fantastic piece of document that could help the civil service in this country. It's gathered dust. The 2014 confab, a lot of people will say, these are eggheads of the country that came across ethnic divisions in this country, came together to produce that document, gathering dust. The question is, as fantastic as this idea of the 2022 committee is, how do we make it work for it to be practical for the 2023 election? Well, before I say that, I agree with you. I just want to ask you, did you plan some gadget somewhere um, in, <laughs> well, in the hall where we are uh, meeting? Because I, I, as you are speaking, I was saying to myself, that, look, are we well? <laughs> uh, these are issues that kept coming up. And the key word is implementation. Absolutely. That is not enough for us to meet, to brainstorm, to come up with brilliant ideas as to how this country can move forward but the critical thing is the implementation. Absolutely. And have you thought about that? We, I said we debate. It was, I said, like, as either you have some gadgets or you have... <laughs> Maybe or, or, it's or, dropped or, or, on. Yes. <laughs> because a lot of people will say Nigeria is not... Uh, we're not lacking in fantastic ideas. We are far, perhaps some of the most brilliant people you can find across the world. Whatever you find Nigerians, fantastic people, intellectuals. But the see, question of implementation of take, whatever ideas that we have... My take on this is even um, much deeper in the sense that, number one, we have a population of 200 million, and that pop the pop Nigerian population is very young, very dynamic, very active, um, not aging. Um, if you look at the population in Japan, um, in Germany, in uh, Italy, across Western Europe, um, their population is aging. As young, strong, dynamic, um, creative, um, also very educated. If you Google um, who are the best educated people um, even in the United States, it comes up with just one word, Nigerians. So it's not just that we have um, um, uh, a young, uh, strong population, but also a population that is very highly educated. Now, that is just one aspect of it. The second aspect of it, God has blessed this country with every natural resource that you can think of, crude oil. And it's not just that uh, we've been blessed with crude oil, with, with, with timber. Uh, so our crude is the best in the world. Timber, we have the best in the world. Uh, it's only in Nigeria that you find ebony. Uh, the black ebony grown in the wild, um, Amazonia, uh, mahogany, uh, teak. You just name it, the best. E every natural resource again, uh, whether it's gold, um, uh, if you scratch our surface like this in, in, in different parts of the country, in some parts you find limestone, in, 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 in Enugu uh, uh, and some other um, um, states, you find coal, in Zamfara you find gold, and I can go on and on. And we have we 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 failed to be able to unnest all of this research. Exactly. And that is the essence of and the, the rationale behind our meetings. All right. So that, that something must be done. And drastically and too. And done quickly. Mm. That is so the this, on, the, on the final note, on the final note, let's wrap up on this note. The nation, the minds of intellectuals and well-meaning Nigerians are, have been opened up about this idea of a national rebirth and a con forming a consensus, forging a consensus. So the eyes of the nation and the people will be on the 2022 committee to be able to walk the talk. And this is not going to be a talk shop. On a final note, can you tell us that it's part of your agenda to ensure that every political party that's represented will ensure that they will bring to the fore, bring a flag bearer and equality, so that if Nigerians are picking, they're picking impeccable personalities for the presidents in 2023. Can you guarantee that? Well, um, there are two parties in this country. And there the are party, multi-parties, but two major. Yeah, two major. <laughs> there are only two. 
um, it, like we Kingsmen from King's College, we said that there are only two secondary schools, two colleges in Nigeria, King's College and the rest. Um, in this case, we have only two political um, parties, major parties. Now, um, look at it this way. Okoa was in the hall. Opasaki was in the hall. Tambor was in the hall. This is now on the, uh, the side of the PDP. Um, Bapara was there. Um, Okonkoso was there. Bukola Saraki was there. And so all the critical players on the side of the PDP were there. Also, on the side of the, the, the APC, the, 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 the APC um, Governor of IME, Governor Bagudu uh, of KB, um, Governor Badaru, Umahi. Uh, Governor Umahi, Governor Ben Ayade, um, um, Governor Nasri Rufai, uh, critical elements. So Pius Ayim was there. There were three former Senate presidents. Kenya Namani was there. Pius Ayim was there. We assembled 100 presidential materials. Mm. 100, any of whom can efficiently serve as president of the Federal Republic, all of whom have distinguished themselves in their various different fields. Um, if those gathered in that room um, do not solve our problems, then we're in trouble. Right. Uh, I was going to close this conversation in the last 30 seconds or so, but it's also important for you to tell Nigerians the guarantee that they can have that this committee is for the common good of the Nigerian people and not end up I for a few self-seeking people. I think I personally have addressed this um, repeatedly. This is beyond any individual. Absolutely. This is not being done uh, for, uh, to promote. Uh, there is no hidden agenda. It's what I've said. It's a, a lot of it, you've repeated it yourself. So. Uh, what is at stake is Nigeria. This is for Nigeria. All right. Thank you. We probably will bring you back, Mr. Kashim Imam, because I know this is a continuing conversation. I didn't and say that I want to come back. <laughs> we will bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> then, because it's a continuing then, conversation then until you, we you, achieve the national consensus I will on national rebels. I'll give you my agent's number. You will call him. You discuss the terms. You discuss the fees. Seriously. I know you're and a businessman. And then once I hear that, look, channels have made good, I'll, I'll be back. I know you're a businessman. Yes, I But am. because we are, we're coming to a consensus, so for a national rebirth, you do it as a lawyer in Nigeria. There will be no fee. For, without fee. Well, <laughs> everything. I've uh, uh, had different programs on channel, channels, um, including TED form programs, different ones, political programs, and on each occasion, we had to pay. You will have to it, pay. It was, because yeah. this is a business endeavor. Exactly. <laughs> so, 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 as you so rightly if I said, come to your farm, I'm, I have to pay for your product. I'm also... I'm also <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Ayuba, for coming here today. You, thank you. Mr. Imam is the co-convener of the 2022 committee, uh, a group of Nigerians who are coming together to forge a national consensus for rebirth. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll take a break, and when we return, Mr. Coyote Ajula, a lawyer, will be joining me, and the conversation will be on the dilemma of the APC party ticket ahead of 2023. That gets our attention again tonight. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's tell you again that the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, has responded to the statement from the Office of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, uh, who yesterday, through his uh, media aid, said that um, they cannot, no one can, the executive cannot blame the judiciary for the slow pace of justice delivery in the nation. And today, the Office of the Attorney General has responded, and uh, in part, I quote the statement from the Attorney General. It says, it is on the record that the Buhari-led federal government has a record of non-interference with or meddling into the affairs of the legislature and judiciary. It was within the context of these Quality, quality and feature of non-interference by the Buhari-led federal government and for the avoidance of subsidies that the minister responded that high-profile cases were presented by the federal government for prosecution and the government came out with initiatives in its efforts to support speedy determination of justice. The Attorney General is saying he is not blaming the judiciary.
Let's uh, switch gears now, everyone, and look into partisan politics. The ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, may have more work, even uh, weightier than that of the PDP, because it's the ruling party. They have more work to do in determining who becomes their party's flag bearer for the 2023 presidential election tonight. We get in the views of a former national secretary of the Labour Party and one of the lawyers who defended President Buhari and the APC at the legal battle of the 2019, 2019 election, a lawyer based here in Abuja and a public affairs commentator, Mr. Karadi Ajilo. He joins us here in Abuja studio. Thanks so much, Mr. Ajilo, for coming tonight. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very sure you watched uh, Mr. Buhari yesterday on this program yes. and the conversations around what is uh, uh, what is up on the sleeves of the APC and the task on the table of the leadership of the party in determining um, those who will fly the party's ticket? If we look at the, the, some of the lists of the names of people who have come forward, the big question on the leaves of everyone is getting a quality representation that will lead the APC into the arena. First and foremost, what are your thoughts on the kind of personalities that have, uh, that whose names have been thrown up recently? Well, several names have been thrown up. We don't need to dis deny that. But one thing we should first note is the fact that APC today happened to be the ruling party. During the time of PDP, we said that's the largest political party, but as it is in Africa, that is it because it's the ruling party. And you mean APC is the largest party? Yes, of course. By what, by what? By all standards, and particularly with the... Do you have an empirical fact? Yes, you, certainly. If you allow me, I will present that. But Please except, go ahead. Except we have, except we, except of the time. But as it is, that is the ruling party. For you to be ruling party, the numbers and, you know, this, this democracy, so the numbers speak for itself of the numbers and a PDP cannot today to say they are the largest political party to be the APC because the question that would be is how come you are not the ruling party? I think that one really said to that. Now the issue now is whosoever that will be the that will be in the leadership of that party will get it right. And because if you if you if you check where they are coming from for the past almost eight years now we have a ruling party, and the essence and the, 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 the full vision of the party is to ensure that they remain in power. And the best way, the first way for you to ensure that is that you have the right people in the helm of the affairs of the party. Now, to the names that have been perdued, left and right, have gone through it, and most of them, they are, they are experienced in their own calling. You have some from our governors, you, I can see some senators there. I can see some that even you may not see what they've done before. But what matter most and what we govern, who will rule the party now will be the members of the party. That is the leadership of the party. And from what we are seeing, particularly with that letter to the INEC, it just signifies the fact that come the end of the February, they will have a new leadership. And I'm sure. You have given legal positions, yeah. opinions about the, the leadership of the party vis-a-vis yeah. uh, -vis the, um, the judgment of court yeah. and the convention. Uh, has your opinion changed? Well, my opinion stays stand as it is because, you know, this legal opinion, this is not about the about issue of sentiment. That legal opinion stands, but again, by the time you look at... Can you what, reiterate what your legal opinion is? The legal opinion... On the leadership of the yeah, the, legal, the legal opinion is to the fact that, as it is, the governor, that is Malabuni, who is currently being in the... In the saddle with the leadership of the party, is to me is an anathema that should not be going by the constitution of, of, of Federal Republic of Nigeria and the constitution of the party. That one still stands. But now, we are talking of the convention. Uh, I belong to that school of thought that believe that conventions override everything, even including the constitution of the party. So if this part, if this convention can be duly constituted and the convention can make some pronouncement and resolution, that resolution to some point can kill the, the, what we can say the anomalies that is played in the party now. That is my position on that. Well, how does the party uh, get itself on track considering some of the divisions 
uh, we've seen former governor in Kano and the preceding governor. Now they are looking at a sharing formula in, in the affairs of uh, administration of the affairs of the party. In Oshun State, there are court cases. Now they are going on appeal after uh, the ministers uh, lost at, at the high court. They're going for appeal. In several states, there are divisions. Yes, certainly, you know. We, is this, that a danger for the party to the company? It is. I won't call it a danger if it's well managed. That's why, you know, I started with the fact that going by the position of the PDP, APC, it is something that see every, all eyes are on, on the party. And again, you mentioned the issue of court cases here and there. From experience, most of these court cases, the politicians, they always have a way of settling their differences, particularly when it comes to they have a bigger picture. And I believe the bigger picture is to ensure that they have a very strong and big political party. And the best way to ensure that is every, every cacophony, plethoreas of differences need to come together and come with it. And mind you, political cases, tomorrow, whosoever that have matter in court can quickly withdraw it for the, for the as they used to say, for the sake of the party. Let's go into the contest of 2023 and some of the names. Uh, if you talk about the big names for the, that have been thrown up in the APC, you talk about Bola Tinobu, you talk about Professor Yemi Oshibajo, you talk about uh, uh, Yaya Belo. Uh, Senator Richard Sokorocha and all of that. Yesterday, yes, right where you were seated, Daniel Buala was saying that it doesn't look like Professor Yemi Oshibajo is running. But we try to say, no, you cannot say that because he has not come forward. But, you know, the sources in the presidency, they're saying, look, there is only one authority or the source from the, that can give information for the VP. And when people say that the VP is going to announce after the convention, can you confirm to us? I want to believe. Let me let me let me let, 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 let me start with that with that statement for the presidency. Office office of the vice president is an office on its own, and I believe that they can say whatever they feel that it is. But forgetting that, whosoever that makes that statement, I'm, I'm afraid is oblivious of our constitution, of the provision of the constitution that whatever may be your aspiration, whatever may be your what you think, what you express, nobody can stop anybody from aspiring. And apart from that, and wishing and aspiring that somebody should aspire again. I say this from the point that we all were entitled to our own opinion. I can come tomorrow to believe that you will be the savior of all of, the, of, of, of our nation. And if I believe in you, I will go out for you. But, and again, being that from the presidency, that is what it is. And that's why we need to, we, we need to, distinguish between the office of the vice president and the personality of Yemi Usipadjo. As it is, and I repeat, I've been saying this for, since all these days, is, is running from this election is not negotiable to start with. Really? Not only that it is you, you can say authoritatively. Yeah, I can say that authoritatively, and I think those are the presidency they are listening. It's constitutional. And I said something some days back, and I think this is the issue of law. He has that, that fundamental right of first refusal, particularly being the vice president of the country, in a better climate. First refusal to the party or to the president? To, to, to that ticket. He has, the, he has, he has that morally right. Morally speaking or conventional wise? Mo morally speaking. Convention wise? Convention wise, even, even when it comes to constitutionally, prescribed, because this, there, 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 are, there are some. There are some doctrine, there are some issues that you, you, you don't need, even need to negotiate about. This is somebody for the past seven years has been in that office and performed exceedingly well. The president has talked about it. Nobody has been able to find a 40 today. And if, if you can be vice president for, for, for so long, and what, do we, what, do we, what should happen? It should be, it should be the next president. And that is what it is. And I want to believe that the leadership, leadership of the party should believe that that is the position. Unfortunately, I know so many people will ask me, what about Atikwa Ubaka? You know that the, sec the second time, he has a lot of running battle with the president. But he won the case of the Supreme Court. Yes, but PDP at that time... against Atiku. Atiku but, but, against PDP. Yes, even it got to a point that he was even early being expelled. But in this case, no single issue that we can say he had with the president, that is something that is commendable. That is something that even even automatic ticket, I think that's what it is. I don't think if they, if they pay PC, if actually they are, they, are, they are so serious in winning this election, the only person I believe without any rancor. Somebody I listened recently, someone said that uh, one of those contesting has 14, 
14 governors rooting for him. I need to say this, at least I get in touch with most of the governors. Most of the governors in APC and PDP are even supporting the aspiration of uh, the vice president. This is so clear. If you give me the time or maybe is another it a fact, day, this is or a it's fact. conjecture. It is not a conjecture. I, we, 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 we all have a way where we, 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 we discuss. Forget about the other thing. You mentioned uh, Daniel Boala some minutes ago. I'm mm -hmm. even shocked when he was saying that when actually I need to meet him because he's someone I happen to know very to ask him, when did you deviate from this uh, this you know, um, vice president of Siba Job Project? Because it was, it was, he, he happened to be one of those even rooting for it. And if I, I need not to, 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 to make to public some of the, some of the confidential matter. He even, even sometimes sat to be interviewed, to be part of those that we advocate for uh, uh, President Yemi Oshibaji. So the question is, at what point did he now realize it shouldn't be? And I need to address this issue again. Many people believe that the only thing they will tell you that, oh, so, so, so candidate has given me the vehicle, so very party they have done, so he must be the president. Is the Nigerian president safe for sale? That is the one question we should ask. Must it be that because you got me a job, that is when I will not, if I believe, I can save this con country because of the job you, you got for me. That is why I will not, I, I, I would believe that you will be. Mm -hmm. I must confess, let me say this, and it's very interesting. 2004, I had my wedding. One of the, one of the, one of those that have sponsored that wedding is Bola Tinubu. Even the, 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 the state government was even represented in my, in my wedding in Lagos. But I won't say because somebody seem to be so be so nice to me for my wedding i will now use that to 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 run a grand so you gave a position yesterday yeah, sure. because uh, bola tinubu is uh, a political leader to professor yemi Oshibajo, yeah, sure. that he should accord him that cultural respect does that is that valid it is very uncharitable for anybody to say that particularly seen over 200 million nigerians because of because someone has been benefit you have been you have been a has been your benefactor because of that yeah, I, that is why i raise the issue that is nigerian presidency for sale is it because somebody offer you a job of a car that is why you believe we must lead the country we are talking of our future we are talking of the future of my kid my my daughters they, they will now say daddy because somebody offer you an essay because of that way. No, that is not the way it should be. What should be is that who has the capacity, mental capacity, physical capacity, intellect, intellectual capacity, competence to be the president. That is one of the things we should say. What, whatever you say about Buhari, you know that is a good leader, but we will not deceive ourselves that his health, health issue defines his, his presidency. Are we going to have the same thing? Are we going to have the same thing? If you look at the manner in which some of the candidates have gone uh, around, consultations here and there, but you know the information you get from the VP's office is, no, the VP is going to concentrate on the work of governance and all of that. But we are also reading uh, that there seems to be some positive buzz in the presidency about those who are rooting for Yemi Oshibajo. Is that true? Can you give us a feeler of what is happening in the presidency since you are close to the Oshibajo camp? Well, let me, let, let me read. I will not. Let me be real. I am not working at that villa. I'm not no, working but you at are close to, to, start the, with to the Oshibajo team. But one thing that is so certain is that Yemi Oshibajo, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, will run for this election. I will win. You can tell us authoritatively. That one is so clear to feel And again, I think so we why, need to give why, it to him. Why, why, as a, does he have a team yet? Like uh, we see Okorocha, uh, he has a team. As, I speak, Tinubu, today, a as team. I speak this evening, yeah. over 163 groups are working to, to, to actualize this dream. I'm being sincere. Uh, uh, I, I, I represent some, I, I, mean, I mean, nothing less than about six to seven group, group of such, such group that are rooting for it. Some, sometimes they go, most of the statements made by progressive lawyers, even lawyers, juries, Senior advocate, everybody coming together to form progressive lawyers for Yemi Oshibajo because one of our own. Some sometimes you see professionals for Yemi Oshibajo from the non-seats for every, virtually everywhere. In Kano, you see what happened. Everybody in Kano, they, they came together. In Akure, in, in Lagos, everywhere. You know, the, the issue is this, and we should understand some of them, most of those who are contesting or who are rooting, most of them are jobless. They have nothing to do, so they have the latitude, they have, the, they have all 
ebb luxury to jump up and down to be saying this. But mind you, this Bio Shibajo is having a dual role here as a vice president who is saddled with a lot of responsibility. Last week, you can see he's in the attending one ECOWAS or AU meeting. On another breath, you saw him in Lagos attending the Shone Combrae. The next day, you see in Kano. With all this, you still want him to go on. And that one should show you the personality. But is, is there a constitutional uh, barrier or a legal drawback? for a sitting executive elected member not to be able to come out early enough no it depends on the personality of 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 of, of who is holding the office there is someone that believe that i still have a job to 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 to, to perform and i have so he's being cautious of course cautious the office have, that not only cautious again to know that there is responsibility that must be settled there are some jobs that must be performed Ray now coming out, you know many things with many, many, many immediately Yemi Oshibajo will declare his intention, you know the equation will change. So the best thing to do is face the job that is being elected to do. It's like what the Queen would say mentioned when he was when he was celebrating his his his, his anniversary recently. He said, What I swear and know to do, I will serve and I'll be loyal to the people of the United Kingdom. And that is the position of Yemi Oshibajo as it as it today. I'm the vice president being saddled with the job, not the vice president that is raising newspaper like some other or the other vice president. Vice president that is every day up and doing, going everywhere to ensure that Nigeria move forward. I want, and again, to now be running for president. And it, it, to me, I will be one of those that will raise it. So as it is, he's focused in, deliver, in, 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 deliver, in his delivery to the Nigerian But for people. those who have been doing, going around and making consultation, they are covering a lot of grants. Politically, you know what this means. Yes, yes, Ali, yes sure. Is that not uh, a negative for the VP if he eventually comes out? No, it is. Yes, no, these guys have covered grants. No, let me tell you something. We are talking of issue of passion. We are talking of those that believe in him. There are some, like I, as I sit here, you see us talking about who wants Yemi Oshibajo to be because of a conviction. Conviction and passion is different from when one is being sponsored. I listened to what, what the, is, the media has said, most of it is uh, maybe sponsors, speculators. Maybe, he, he, I'm sure he had some people at the end, at the end in mind, but those you see today are those genuinely, you see the organic, the way they, they are going all out to ensure that this is what is. I quite appreciate one of the fears of maybe the likes of Boala that this is the right time because somebody told me that this, this thing is liking to playing, playing football. That some players wanted to be signed on immediately so that they would know which club to believe. But, and again, you can't liken this process to a game of football. This is uh, for some people are so convinced. You need to see the numbers of people calling, All putting right. money. Same together. way, uh, I mean, so that, that's a very common language in politics that people are calling. I can stand Sean or Kimbaloye for president. Yes, sure. My people are saying that I should come out. That's the, the common language <laughs> for in politics. That my people say I should come out. Yes, and that's the reason why a lot of people come out. But uh, on a final note, Mr. Uh, Ajula, tonight is a challenge before the APC to retain power. The PDP has thrown up that challenge and said, look, we're going to the field and we're telling Nigerians that we want to rebuild and retake power from the APC. You are talking about Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Can the APC be able to stand in that election in 2023 and tell Nigerians that they want a renewal of, uh, in government considering the situation of the country and the promises have been made? Unfortunately, the APT cannot stand. APC, unfortunately, the PDP cannot stand. Uh, uh, the truth of the matter is this. Look at the personality of you, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. I challenge both in the, in the PDP and APC, anybody that can stand, that can stand shoulder to shoulder, competence to competence, credibility to credibility. Uh, uh, professionalism to professionalism. In whatsoever way, at wise, I think you need to bring someone and compare it to the music. What about, he, he what about the primary of the APC? Uh, the likes of uh, Bola Tinubu, <laughs> the likes of uh, Okorocha, when come, they go come, to the primary. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't compare, you don't compare, you don't compare of, uh, original to, to, to let, me, let me, I don't want to use, I, I mean, I'm on national TV, I don't want to use uh, palatable, but, this, but look, the difference is clear. Look at I think that's another that. thing we have to know. Look at, look at them. Look at the names, bring, the, the, the bring, faces. Bring, bring, the faces. All, bring all their faces and let us ask what, they have, what have they done. These are, these are the issues. 
are we talking of the issue of age mind you and again one thing that matter most in this election will be the trust of the people mind you answers youth they are somewhere waiting is the issue of you of issue of if you have trust among all these all, the, all those faces who can you be who, who do you believe you can trust and right. that is a sense of representation we need to go now because we are totally out of time but i must sincerely thank you mr Kaudi ajula for coming on tonight apc has a lot of work to do in terms of party administration and of course getting a candidate as the weeks and months draw closer to the election thank you so much for coming tonight well that's our show for today everyone many thanks for watching i'm sure Kimali. bye for now